Welcome to SFL Honors, SFL Nation. 50 plus of you and company joining in here on another wonderful show. Sorry for the delay. We were really hoping to bring you the top 10 plays tonight. We have just had a day. But we're going to get it to you. We're going to get it to you in due time. With me, alongside me, as he has been all season long, Stephen Mullinex along for the ride. How you doing, Stephen? Hey, hello, SFL Nation. Hey, what a way to end it right here, the SFL Honors. Uh, put a put a nice cap to this great season that we had, season 10, a legendary season, a season of change uh, with many more exciting things to come. Uh, for now, today, we look back. Tomorrow, we look forward. Yes, we do. Re-signing starts tomorrow. So this is one last look at season 10. And we've got a lot to get to tonight. First, we're going to go through end of season honors. Then we're going to get to Pro Bowl rosters. We also have the announcement of when the Pro Bowl draft will be. We'll also have, of course, the inaugural class of the SFL Hall of Fame to get to. Uh, so we're excited for that as well. 100 bits from PB and Jotter. 50 from Eric JDWA has left. Also with 100, and we had some bits uh, come through before we were on the air, too. So thanks so much for the support, everybody. First tonight on SFL Honors, it's the Coach of the Year Honors. The nominees are Tallahassee Offensive Coordinator Alex Bond, Mexico City Defensive Coordinator Ramos Lynn, Sioux Falls Offensive Coordinator Jason McGee, McGee and Alaska Head Coach Max Paul, Stephen, what do you think about uh, this list of candidates? Uh, well, they're all deserving, obviously. Uh, Alex Bond there with uh, Tallahassee and the things that he was able to do offensively, we have not seen much of in this league before. Uh, with Ramos standing, we're talking about a, a the defending champions who uh, came alive uh, at the right time to get into the postseason. Uh, of course, Jason McGee, a legend in this league already able to uh, secure uh, his place uh, as one of the best coaches in the league. And, and of course, uh, Max Paul, the, the championship winning head coach. So all deserving for all different kinds of reasons. And, uh, and I think any of them are worthy, worthy of this honor. Well, the, head, uh, the coach of the year for season 10 goes to Tallahassee Offensive Coordinator Alex Bond. Steven, the Tallahassee offense uh, slowed in the championship game, but, man, this offense put up some big-time numbers. They were the only team that averaged over 30 points a game, and their offense was uh, nearly unstoppable. And then showing their versatility late in the season, they got their run game going too. Yeah, they went uh, undefeated throughout the season all the way up until the championship game. This is not a surprise. Uh, Alex Bond, what a wonderful job that he did uh, with those two star wide receivers uh, really leading the way in statistical categories. And of course, their quarterback under center, Christian Christensen, uh, just number one in so many different categories. Uh, this was the offensive team that was supported by the best defensive line in the league. Uh, just a powerhouse, Tallahassee, and a real shock they didn't come away with the championship. So Alex Bond takes it. 1,200 bits from little man Michael in the chat. Thank you, little man, with the uh, big bit cheer. So loving that. Next SFL honor of the night is the Community Leader Award. The nominees, Mexico City running back Ray Bentley, Vancouver tight end Tristan Carr, St. Louis linebacker Scott LaRue, and Chicago cornerback Kanye Rockefeller. Steven, this community is growing over 450 members now, and uh, these guys, have, I mean, they're just there all day, every day, chatting it up with everybody and supporting the, the uh, SFL in a big way. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, Cam, where we didn't have any type of uh, social community, not like this. We were struggling on Facebook and Twitter, and and uh, luckily we found Discord and a community where these four have really picked up the torch to keep people active and uh, keep throwing new hot topics out there, discussing things about the SFL. Uh, really, each one of them uh, deserves this award and some applause because, applause because 
you know, they are the light that's leading us socially. And uh, their voices are, are big ones in our locker rooms and in our chat rooms. And, uh, and they deserve appreciation. The SFL's Community Leader Award goes to Mexico City running back, Ray Bentley. Congratulations, Ray. Ray uh, wins the vote. He uh, wins the vote by, I'm trying to get the results here. He had 54% of the vote. So he uh, he had the community support uh, Monday through Friday for sure. That guy is always around. So congratulations to Ray. Also, too, uh, we want to uh, to give a shout to Alex Bond. He also received a whopping 51 percent of the vote on coach of the year honors the next category is the community team award for outstanding participation in social media and within the community and the nominees are the alaska storm the dallas roughnecks lobos the Indianapolis Red Devils and the Vancouver Legion. Steven, these teams are visible. These teams are creative. These teams set that standard uh, in the SFL. Yeah, these teams go above and beyond uh, what many of the others do. They they just take things to another level within their team channel, uh, on, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook. These guys have identities. These guys have regular social posts. Uh, I know us in Dallas, we... We created a Nike campaign. We had, we created uh, sports cards for our players, and 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 it's really just fostering a community within your team of being a real, actual team, supporting each other, uh, getting adulation and joy from from all the achievements that you do together, progressing together. Uh, it is a really a community thing, and these four teams do it the best. Shout out to BA Mike Foxtrot with the 1,000 bits and the let's go. Thanks for the cheer. By one vote, the Team Community Relations Award goes to the Dallas Roughnecks and Lobos. Congratulations, Stephen. Your team had a rough year this year on the field, but man, off the field, uh, you guys, uh, you guys really came together in a big way, and I think the community noticed. Wow! Thank you so much. And by one vote, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, we we were, you know, we were on on as far as the stats were concerned, as far as the standings, we were the worst team in the SFL. And I am so proud proud of the team members that we picked up, and the ones that started from the very beginning that stayed with us and stayed active. And we tried to do our best to to get them involved throughout the season and to have something to look forward to. Uh, quality guys. That, I just got to give that award to them. I have some really quality people that are that are on the team. Uh, that even through our hardest times, they stuck with us. Next up on SFL Honors, the nominee for Game of the Year. The selections: Indianapolis and Tallahassee's quarterfinal, Vancouver and San Antonio's nail biter in Week Nine. Alaska and San Antonio's tremendous front page game in week six. The quarterfinal victory, the first playoff victory for Sioux Falls against Queen City. And week 10 had a couple of doozies, the Tallahassee, Mexico City nail biter and the Atlanta comeback over Carolina in week 10. And we'll get your thoughts, Steven, in a moment once we announce the winner, the winner of game of the year. With 26% of the vote, the Indianapolis and Tallahassee quarterfinal. What a game that was, Stephen. And uh, when we redo our top 10 games of all time, I'm guessing that's going to be somewhere in the mix. Yeah, what a tremendous game that was. And, uh, you know, Indianapolis able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the juggernaut that was Tallahassee this season. You know, each one of these games had was important for different reasons. I think of Queen City and Sioux Falls, what, it, what that, that win meant. To, for the Sparrows, uh, you know, Carolina, Atlanta, the comeback, the comeback game of the year for me, uh, this, the, just how they were down by so much to come back. But Indianapolis, Tallahassee is your winner of the quarterfinals, uh, a nail biter, and understandably so, considering how important that was. Next up on SFL Honors, it's the General Manager of the Year Award. 
The four nominees are the Dallas is the Dallas GM Crash Combs, the Carolina GM AJ Francis, the Houston GM Ryan Michaels, and the London GM Slynn Shady. And there's a lot more GMs uh, coming into the league here in the offseason. Steven is general manager is quickly becoming a very important position in the SFL. Yeah, and a gateway to ownership for a lot of, uh, you know, aspiring owners. Uh, but, you know, this is one of the more difficult uh, categories to vote for just because these general managers are so involved within their own teams. Uh, a lot of, if you're not on that team, you're on the outside, you don't get to see entirely all the work that they put into it. Uh, but you just kind of hear through the grapevine some of the great things that each one of these GMs are doing. And, you know, a lot of times these guys are also pretty social people there on Discord, but really hard to judge uh, as far as how, what a great job they did within their teams outside of, the, you know, their teammates or the guys that are underneath them that are just, you know, singing their praises. The winner of the SFL's General Manager of the Year Award by 12% of the vote, gaining a total of 39% of the vote is... Houston Hyenas general manager, Ryan Michaels. Congratulations, Ryan, on the honor and the award for your outstanding work in the Houston Hyenas locker room and organization in season 10. Next up are the moments of the year, and we've got them all for you to play. We'll find out who wins after we take a walk down memory road, the or memory lane, whatever. Yeah. Moments of the year right now. Semifinals start the 8th of April. One of these two teams are going to be involved in one of those semifinal clashes. Punt from Finch. It's blocked. No way. Down in the Indy. Red Devils will take possession, but it does not matter. Fourth down goes nowhere, and Tallahassee already has it in field goal range. I don't believe it. I'm sick to my stomach for the Indy Red is Devils. Coming. This they is huge. Not... 51 even for a star kicker is not necessarily a gimme. You can have a lot of things go wrong. Under three minutes to go, the Aztecs to go back up by two scores against the unbeaten Pride. Mexico City milking the clock down to four on the play clock. The snap is high. The hold is good. There's a penalty marker oh. on the play. The kick is good. What's Ooh. the flag? Don't often see this. What nope. is the flag? I don't think I saw anybody jump. It's a clip oh, on no. Mexico City. Oh, no. On a field goal. It moves them out of field goal range, and they have to punt. Yeah, they're not even going to be close on a clipping call. That I have never seen here in the SFL. Oh, he didn't even do anything. He did nothing. Look at this. What did he do? Yeah, that's a terrible oh, call. Oh, that's man. horrible. Yeah, and yeah, we've seen some uh, magnificent plays by Manning tonight. Two in the backfield, first and 10 of the 20. Lillian Dulles passes intercepted at the 13-yard oh. line. And back coming, 35-40. It's Major Key. <laughs> He's trying to get his second. And Key has got a touchdown. Wow, Cam. Uh, unbelievable. Not only do you get the interception to seal essentially seal the game. You take it through a crowd right down the middle of the field for the touchdown for your second of the night. Ball game is on the foot of Johnny Omega. He does have a miss from earlier, doinked it off the right upright. The right foot, or the left foot, sorry, on the right hash. Snap is good, hold good. Kick is on the way to save their season. It's good! 43 yards and it's all the way through. That is a walk-off field goal for Johnny Omega and the OKC Renegades, and they save their season in the waning oh, seconds. Mont oh. you. Yeah, Mexico City. I'm, oh, and he avoids the pressure. Sir Charles stepping up will throw it. And he's got a man in the back of the end zone. Did he get it? He did! Touchdown, oh Tulsa! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Corey Jones? <laughs> Why not? Corey, Why not Corey Jones? freaking Jones. Unbelievable.
Finch standing on her own 20 yard line. Gets the ball away from about the 25. Steve by Reed, Reed makes a man miss, makes two men miss, and they could go. He broke through everybody. One man to beat, and he's gone. Past the putter, 30, 20, 10, five, scores! Put it on the board. Davius Reed may have just set the crowd home happy with his second return touchdown of the game. In overtime! Man, Steven, some of those, uh, some of those are painful uh, for some, uh, memorable for others. This is the most, these were the most memorable moments of the season. Not necessarily top plays, not necessarily, um, you know, not necessarily the most outstanding plays, but the, these were the moments in time that people remembered from the season. Um, and we'll get the one that stands out to you in just a second. But we do have a winner with 28.7% of the vote. The most memorable moment of the SFL's 10th season was the clipping call <laughs> against Mexico City that prevented the Aztecs Whoa. from taking down the undefeated Tallahassee Pride. Steven, you and I called that game. Is that the moment that sticks in your mind from the season, or was it something else? No, that that there was just so much talk afterwards, so many memes created afterwards. I had a feeling that would be the one. But but looking back uh, at all of these great plays, uh, the, the two that really stand out to me are the Chicago punt return uh, touchdown in overtime. And just how much blocking he did not have when he got into the end zone, there was about five or six guys in front of him, which just makes that return that much more incredible. And of course, that that uh, Tulsa Hail Mary uh, touchdown pass for the for, for the win at the end of the game. We just don't. We just haven't seen maybe a less, you know a handful of those. And and uh, well, of course, most famously by Mexico uh, the season prior, but. But th those are just rare, and, and, and that he caught it in, in such traffic with so many defenders around him. But, yeah, I had a feeling it would be that Clemson call just because, like you have it listed there, how infamous it was. Crazy. SFL Honors moves on, and now we're getting to the player awards. We start with the Defensive Rookie of the Year nominees, and the nominees are Tulsa Strong Safety Charles Ball, Tallahassee Defensive End Tyquan Hale, Tallahassee defensive tackle Mike Fats Johnson, Tallahassee defensive tackle Hunter Norwood, London linebacker Slynn Shady, and Houston defensive tackle Chad Tackle. And uh, man, a, a phenomenal rookie class. Season 11's rookie class has a lot to uh, a lot to live up to. Yeah, most definitely. I say, you know, if we were if we're at the beginning of the season, I think it'd have been a runaway with Charles Ball, just because of uh, kind of a what a breakout he had really early, but. As the season wore on, you know, Tallahassee's defensive line was, was so dominant, uh, you know, in a year where maybe Slint Shady or Chad Tackle might have won it, and they might have. I'm just speculating here, but it's almost as if you should probably give it to the entire defensive line for Tallahassee. Well, all of them had double-digit sacks, but let's see what the populace said, uh, who they picked as a defensive rookie of the year. The defensive rookie of the year winner? Gaining 32% of the vote was Tulsa wow. strong safety, Charles Ball. Ball had eight interceptions, first among rookies. He was sixth in the SFL with 13 pass deflections. All eight of his regular season interceptions came in the first six games he played. He also had a pick in the playoffs and that infamous game against Indianapolis in prime time, which many remember his season by three picks and a kickoff return touchdown against the Red Devils. Yeah, and look, I'm surprised. Uh, you know, it might have been a case to where all those Tallahassee defenders kind of neutralized each other in the voting. But, you know, congratulations, Charles Ball, not taking anything away from him. Uh, you know, if we would have voted that first that first half of the season, uh, absolutely, it would have been him by a landslide here. But uh, this guy, uh, we saw him a couple times, and he was just electric uh, from the from the get-go. And probably someone that uh, SFL offenses uh, game planned around 
as the season went on. That might be the reason for his, you know, lower numbers as the season went on. Bigsby004, thanks for the 100 bits. Now, next to the Offensive Rookie of the Year Awards, the nominees are Carolina running back A.J. Francis, Indianapolis quarterback Nathan Lee, Indianapolis wide receiver Eli McCormick, Houston running back Warren Murray, Oklahoma City quarterback Deacon Nickens, and Tallahassee wide receiver Duke Wilson. This was a talented class of rookies on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, truly. Yeah, tough, tough choices here. I mean, all of these guys are, are certainly worthy of it. Uh, made big splashes this season. Uh, you know, Warren Murray, what a great running back for Houston and a great tradition of running backs. Can we talk a little bit about Deacon Nickens and his transition from owner to quarterback and just what an impact he had Oklahoma with Oklahoma City dragging them into the playoffs. And uh, last but not least, there, Duke Wilson there on the list. Uh, the, the dude just averaged uh, a plus 20 yards a catch, led the SFL in touchdown receptions on a team that had Ken Gossett opposite of him. Duke Wilson was actually the number two wide receiver, which is amazing. Nathan Lee, Eli McCormick out of Indiana, helping lead that team to the playoffs. And A.J. Francis taking over for a legendary Carolina and doing him proud, all worthy. With a whopping 48% of the vote, the winner for Offensive Rookie of the Year, Tallahassee wide receiver Duke Wilson. 1,802 receiving yards, first among rookies, 21 touchdowns, first in the SFL. He's one of only three players now in SFL history with at least 100 career receptions to average 17 yards a catch, joined by Daly Holder and Elijah Bishop. Uh, amazing. What an amazing season there by uh, Duke Wilson. The guy came onto the scene immediately and just started scoring long touchdowns. And it seems like he did it throughout the entire season. Whenever they needed a big play, you know, they would go to, to Gossett. Whenever they needed a long, deep play, they would go to Wilson. And for everything in between, the guy was simply uh, the best playmaker in the SFL. All right, next up, the defensive player of the year. The nominees, and there are a lot of them. Vancouver free safety, Mahmoud Ashlani. Tallahassee strong safety, Charles Ball. Alaska defensive end Alex Dominguez, San Francisco Sharks cornerback Merrick Itera, Houston cornerback Ryan Michaels, Tallahassee defensive end Hunter Norwood, Tulsa linebacker Espen Real, and Atlanta linebacker Aquantis Shine. Well, you know, I think, you know, a sleeper here would be Ajalani. I think this guy had an underrated season in used, uh, Vancouver, excuse me. I, I think he played well. Alex Dominguez, of course, uh, the reigning. Defensive player of the year is always a favorite from year in to year out. Uh, even with uh, Tallahassee coming across with so many big sack numbers. And of course, the now, you know, defensive rookie of the year, Charles Ball. Does he, does he add another trophy to the trophy case? The winner of the Defensive Player of the Year award goes to, with 32% of the vote, Alaska defensive end Alex Dominguez, 19 and a half sacks this year, first in the league, 31 tackles for loss, that was second in the league. He's had at least 17 sacks in three straight seasons, and his 67 and a half sacks is number one all time in the SFL by 27 and a half. Oh, amazing. And let's not forget that he made the position change from inside the defensive line to outside to the defensive end and still put up monster numbers. Coming up next, it's the Offensive Player of the Year. The nominees are Mexico City running back Ray Bentley, Tallahassee quarterback Christian Christensen, Alaska quarterback Ron Cochran, Tallahassee wide receiver Ken Gossett, Queen City running back Ash Odom, and Tallahassee wide receiver Duke Wilson. Well, could this be another case where all of these Tallahassee players kind of cancel each other out and someone comes up amongst them if, if the one person was to do it, I would probably say Ron Cochran, the most accurate passer in the SFL who just won a championship for Alaska. That might be the favorite. The winner of the SFL's Offensive Player of the Year Award for Season 10 is oh. Mexico City running back Ray Bentley with his second winning uh, award of the night. 
Ray Bentley, 1,604 rushing yards in the league. That was third this year, but his 12 rushing touchdowns were first. He had 359 carries this season, most in his career, and his 5,712 career rushing yards now ranks eighth all time. Well, that's my bad. I mean, look, Ray Bentley, he, he was he had a slow start to the season, but really picked it up as the, as the season wore on and had, uh, you know, at that big playoff game. Uh, he, he He's, you know, uh, the consummate professional here in the SFL. When you talk about running backs, most people talk Ray Bentley first. Just super surprised by the pick, but well-deserved. And finally, your season 10 SFL MVP. Your nominees, Tulsa strong safety Charles Ball, Tallahassee quarterback Christian Christensen, Alaska defensive end Alex Dominguez, Tallahassee wide receiver Ken Gossett, Queen City running back Ash Odom, and Atlanta linebacker Aquana Shine. And I'm just going to get right Please. to it because it was the most lopsided vote of the of everything 50 percent of the vote to tallahassee quarterback christian christensen 4788 passing yards that was overwhelmingly first 41 touchdowns overwhelmingly first he was sacked only eight not 19 times which was fourth amongst quarterbacks who played 12 games and he is moving up those leaderboards now 15th all time just shy of 10,000 yards with 9,535 for his career. Well, one of the most dominating performances in SFL history, uh, leading his team to an undefeated record during the regular season and into the championship game. Uh, you know, what happened in that championship game should not uh, mark his record. He, he played so well for so long and consistently played well. Very worthy of this honor. Christian Christensen, congratulations. Now it's time for the Pro Bowl. We will list all the players by position who have made Pro Bowl rosters. The Pro Bowl draft will be Friday night, right here on Twitch, where coaches Ramos Lynn and Jermaine Smith will pick their players for what should be an epic, epic Pro Bowl. And uh, I've lost my spot amongst the masses. Uh, of uh, graphics here. Here we go. The SFL Pro Bowl rosters look like this. At quarterback, making the Pro Bowl, Tallahassee's Christian Christensen, Alaska's Ron Cochran, Indianapolis's Nathan Lee, and Sioux Falls's Julian Tyree. The running backs are Ray Bentley from Mexico City, Ash Odom from Queen City, BDG Hollywood from Atlanta, and Warren Murray from Houston. And while we uh, get uh, Steven's thoughts on this initial group, we'll let you know who just missed the cut. Well, uh, no real big surprises here. I mean, look at these quarterbacks. These quarterbacks are among the best in the league. They all led their teams to the postseason. Uh, you know, so, so easy choices there. Running backs, not so easy, uh, but some of the biggest names in the SFL, of course, Bentley, Odom, uh, BDG Hollywood and Murray, uh, who was absolutely terrific in Houston. So let's find out who did not make the cut camp. Matt Wilson missed the cut by four votes. Deacon Nickens missed the cut by five votes. Tom Pepper came in seventh. For the running backs, it was AJ Francis finishing fifth. He was seven votes behind Warren Murray. Wow. To the whiteouts we go. And a lot of them make the Pro Bowl. Alaska's Optimus Klein, Tallahassee's Duke Wilson, and Ken Gossett. Indianapolis's Eli McCormick, Houston's DR Sims, San Antonio's Daly Holder, San Francisco's Gabriel Manning, Oklahoma City's Deezer Powell, Alaska's Robert Merrill, and Atlanta's Boo Chisholm. Chris Curtis was next in line. He missed by six votes, followed by Badir Ashlani. Yeah, really, really happy to see some of these names here that are certainly worthy of recognition. You know, of course, the doctor's always in. Dr. Sim there. Uh, Daily Holder, what a terrific season that he had uh, in uh, San Antonio. Manning uh, for San Francisco. Deezer Powell had an amazing season for Oklahoma City. Uh, Robert Merrill, of course, the consistent professional. And Boo Chisholm, guy that played big for Atlanta. Glad to see some of those names in there. Tight ends and D-line is next. For tight ends, it's Queen City's Mike Daggs receiving the most votes. Alaska's Yassine Clifton, 
St. Louis's Elijah Swaim, and Oklahoma City's Tiberius Bobine. Jalen Hurt missed the Pro Bowl by four votes, Tristan Carr by seven. At defensive tackle, it's Tallahassee's Hunter Norwood and Houston's Chad Tackle. Fats Johnson missed the Pro Bowl by two votes. At defensive end, Alex Dominguez from Alaska and Taekwon Hale for Tallahassee get the call. Scott LaRue was a distant third. Well, I'm personally happy to see uh, St. Louis uh, represented here by Swaim, a guy that uh, has been really consistent for them for the last couple of seasons. Good to see him make this list. Of course, Clifton for uh, Alaska came on strong at the end of the year. Uh, nice to see that his efforts have been awarded here. Uh, and I like that uh, tackle made uh, there at defensive tackle. What a good rookie for Houston. Uh, would probably the, be the talk of the league if it wasn't for all those Tallahassee defenders. How about the linebackers next in the Pro Bowl? And how about this, Stephen? Slynn Shady had the most votes by 24 in a talented linebacking course. Slynn Shady crushes the competition in the voting. He gets the most votes at linebacker. He's joined by Atlanta's Aquana Shine, Tulsa's Espen Real, Queen City's Avery King, Sioux Falls' Nick Fargo, Dallas's combination of father and son with Heath McDaniel the second and senior in San Antonio's Obi Okoye, Ray West. Another Dallas uh, linebacker missed the Pro Bowl by two votes, Dylan Rowland by five. Well, let's talk about Shady and, and the London Knights more specifically. They were known for being a defensive team and he was their defensive captain and he really is the face of that franchise. So I'm not surprised, one, just because he is that for London, and two, how popular he is on Discord. Um, of course, we see some of the, the old hats here that are that are the regulars for this kind of a, a, an achievement. Shine, Royale, King, Fargo, guys that have been in the league for quite some time. Good to see a father-son combination make it in there, uh, just from a personal end. And, Will they be on the same team? That's the oh question, well, right? we'll find out. It's up to uh, it's up to uh, Ramos and, and Destro there. All right, corners are next. Cornerbacks led by Houston's Ryan Michaels, Chicago's Kanye Rockefeller, Vancouver's Major Key, Indianapolis's Michael and Steve Vitak both make the Pro Bowl. Aaron Arrington from St. Louis, Crash Combs from Dallas, Ryan Davidson from Alaska. Merrick Itera missed the Pro Bowl by four votes. B.J. Armstrong and Evan Carroll missed it by eight. Well, you know, I, I love seeing major keys. Vancouver's, you know, to me, this this guy's like Deion Sanders. Uh, there were times where uh, he shut down half of the field when we were watching him play, so uh, great to see him there. Of course, we have some really talented and popular GMs that are making this list in Michaels and Combs, and no doubt their popularity uh, helped them get here. And last but not least, hey, the VTech guys uh, representing more family members who are connected here in the league. Let's go to the safeties. First at strong, Tallahassee's Alex Bond leads the votes. Tulsa's Charles Ball, San Francisco's Max Jackson, and Sioux Falls's A.J. Levy. Nick Daggs, one vote shy. Mm. Cody Hill missed it by six. Free safeties, Vancouver, uh, Mahmoud Aslani, he won the most votes by 22. Jeffrey Daggs, the free agent, is in there from London. Dallas's Troy LaShaw. Dallas gets four Pro Bowlers on defense in Chicago's Maurice Spurgeon. Sir Chappelle missed it by one vote. Anthony Wyo misses by three. Yeah, well, look at this group here. This is a talented group of safeties. Uh, starting off with um, Bond and Ball. What a combo they are. Of course, Jackson uh, now, uh, you know, at the, becoming an owner. And, of course, Levi, who's uh, been around the league for such a long time. Good to see him, to get him get that honor. Agilani had a great season and uh, is one of the more underrated free safeties here in the league. Good to see him get a Pro Bowl vote there. Finally, the kickers and punters, they could be the difference in the Pro Bowl. The kickers that make it, London's Zach Daggs and Mexico City's Cole Varner. Brad Brechett missed the Pro Bowl by two votes. And the punters, Indianapolis's Ashley Finch and San Antonio's Arminius Davis, Eric Walsh, a distant third. And those are your Pro Bowl rosters. Again, the draft will be Friday, Friday night here on Twitch. Jermaine Smith, Ramos, Lynn picking their teams. That is, that's going to be fun.
Final thoughts on the Pro Bowl, Stephen, before we take a moment to really uh, cherish this moment and announce our first Hall of Fame class that will be inducted at the convention in July. Uh, that, that I'm just really excited that we're having a Pro Bowl. We're making this available to uh, to all of these great users. Finally, we've been clamoring for it for season upon season, and finally it's here. And uh, we're going to get an opportunity to see the best of the best go head-to-head -head in one last hurrah before we start the new season. Eleven people will make the Pro Bowl. There were five votes for league staff and contributors there were and uh, and owners as well there were three uh, not uh, there were three selections sorry from the uh, user player sector of the SFL's history and then there were three uh, players from the non-user old school sector of the simulation football league presented by APM Music, we start with the oh, hold on, Cam. league staff. Let me just clarify. Yep. I think you said Pro Bowl. I'm, I think you meant Hall of Fame. Yes, yes, I did. Forgive sure. me. Sure. Forgive me. So 11, 11 total in the Hall of Fame. Five from league staff, owners, and contributors. Three from user players, and three from non-user, uh, from the non-user base. The inaugural class of the SFO Hall of Fame. Without further ado, and I start this off by saying that. Even though I've run this league for uh, God knows how many years, uh, I was honored to be nominated and honored to get in. But this is not about me. This is about uh, all these other guys on this list. Jermaine Smith has been, uh, will be inducted. Eric Barkley, the four-time champion of Queen City, will be inducted. King Havo, the Hex Editor Creator, will be inducted. And the league's director of player personnel, Andrew Ristelli, will be inducted. You know, there were a lot of guys on this on the list, Stephen, and uh, I'm certainly humbled to be one of those guys. Well, on. the most deserving, deserving, I think we can all agree to that. And uh, look, these guys that are on this list have given so much to this league in many different ways. You know, uh, Jermaine Smith as our league president, formerly the owner of the D.C. Dragons. Uh, it's just a stalwart in this league, uh, a guy that's a rock that you can always depend on, a hard worker. And that goes the same with uh, Andrew Ristelli. I mean, has there been another person in our in our personnel department to make such a an impact so early and to give so much of himself and uh, to be so available to not only owners, but uh, users alike? Uh, well deserving, even though he hasn't been in the league very long, he's worked more than many of us that have been here for years. Eric Barkley, the four-time champion, another pretty easy call to make there for the Hall of Fame, well-deserving. And King Habo, you know, in a lot of ways, a lot of the guys that are listening here don't know who that is, uh, but certainly we wouldn't be able to play the game the way that we do. We, weren't ha we wouldn't be able to have the the, the users and, and customize their players in the ways that we do or to play the games the way that we do uh, without his uh, intelligence and his hard work. Shoutouts to two-time champion Thomas Paternitti, one-time champion Kyle Walsh, Tim Johnston, Michael Irvine, and Ronnie Nickens, who were finalists for the Hall of Fame. They are likely somewhere in the mix of the next class. The back half, but still a very important half, a critical half, more than half of the SFL's inaugural Hall of Fame class. These are your user and non-user players making it. DC Dragons running back, may he rest in peace. Richard Snowden, Houston wide receiver, DR Sim. Mexico City quarterback, Matt Wilson. And then the non-user players, Carolina running back, Johnny English. Minneapolis quarterback, Rocco Marconi. And Minneapolis safety, Coma Kaleka. The finalists on the non-user player side, Parky Chul, in order of votes uh, received, Parky Chol, Rick O'Reilly, Pete Bruski, DJ McCoo, Joseph Redfeather, Billy Joe Casper, Jake Legacy, Nick T. Quick, and James Cooley. On the user player side, the finalists, Eddie Gage, Greg Corky, and Aaron Arrington. It was a, it was a tough, uh, tough votes, tough decisions all around by the, uh, by the Hall of Fame uh, voting committee. But uh, there's a lot of great names on this list. I know D.R. Sim and Matt Wilson are going to be in the building uh, in July to get honored as well. That's going to be a special night. Yeah, that's going to be during the SFL convention in July. Uh, but um, 
great to see Richard Snowden's name here. Obviously, uh, has passed away, uh, but uh, I, I don't think you can think about the DC Dragons and their their championship season without him. Uh, just uh, just will live forever in the annals of SFL history. Uh, these non-user players, if, if you're here and you're new and you don't know, uh, the majority of our league for the longest time was made of these non-user players and they mean so much to the league because they give the league history. You know, these names, uh, Johnny English, Rocco Marconi, Coma Kaleka, uh, we users, the ones that watch these games, the owners that were participated, uh, these coaches, they know these names very well. These names were, were the stars of our league before uh, users really showed up. Um, and uh, each one of these guys brings back really pleasant memories for me as I'm sure it does for a lot of us. We were in the 70s much of the night in terms of viewership here. SFL Nation showed out for our final look back at, uh, at season 10. But we're not done. The top 10 plays of the year will come out on YouTube either tonight or tomorrow. Um, and we're certainly excited to share those with you. What a fun season, Stephen. Thanks for being my right-hand man all, all season long from Kick off on the front page to the championship to SFL honors here tonight to the re-signing period tomorrow. It all goes full, full circle and comes back around again. Uh, this is this is it. This is uh, this is your chance, Stephen. Here, uh, your final uh, bow wrap of our 10th anniversary season. Well, what a wonderful season that it was, and it was absolutely my pleasure not only to be here with you, but to serve these guys that are here in the chat rooms, the guys who've been watching our games. The reason why we have what we have now, it's all you guys. And and there's so much to look forward to and so many great things in store, things that you don't even know about, things that I don't even know about yet. But uh, it was just great to be a part of this league, to watch it grow leaps and bounds. And I, I am so looking forward to the future, my friend. And thank you personally from all of us here at the SFL, from the owners, to the coaches, to the GMs, to the users, to the rookies, to the guys who just showed up yesterday. I've got to say thank you, Cameron Irvine. This league would not be what it is without you. You are our guiding light, and uh, we just appreciate everything that you do and who you are, and uh, we love you, my friend. Thanks, buddy. We all love you, too. Um, one love, everybody. One for all. All for one, the Simulation Football League. This has been a presentation of the SFL presented by APM Music on the SFL Network on Twitch TV. For Stephen Mullinex, I am SFL Commissioner and apparently future Hall of Famer, Cameron Irvine. Congratulations, everybody, on a tremendous season. Now, let's go out and make a better one in Season 11. Good night. Dilly dilly. <laughs>